Again, welcome to Statistics. This is DSRT 734 class. We're going to continue with the non-parametric tests. In these lectures, we will start with kruska wallis test. Again, kruska wallis test. The difference between kruska wallis test and our previous test, uh, we causing and sign test, is that with the kruska wallis test, we can test three or more samples. In we cause it test, we normally test two samples. With the sign test, we also test two samples. In this lecture, again, we can test three or more samples. So um, our main objective is to use the kruska wallis test to determine whether three or more samples were selected from population having the same distribution. Okay, in our previous lectures, we use the Wilcoxon test to determine if two dependent samples were selected from population having the same distribution. And this test again, three or more samples. So again, Kruskawalis test is a non-parametric test that can be used to determine whether three or more independent samples were selected from population having the same distributions. So we can see the difference between sign test, will causing, and kruska wallis test. So here we say the new and also the alternative hypothesis for kruska wallis test are as follows. HO can be, there is no difference in the distribution of the populations. HA will be, there is a difference in the distribution of the populations. Again, one more time, the definition for Kruskawalis test is a non-parametric test that can be used to determine whether three or more independent samples were selected from population having the same distribution. Again, the key concept here is three or more independent samples. And will cause in two dependent samples. So again, two conditions for using the Krusko Wallis test are each sample must be randomly selected. Again, here we are using independent samples, independent. So they must be randomly selected. Then the size of each sample must be at least five minimum. And we know that in the Wilcoxon test, we are using dependent sample. So the randomness is not really important. Here we are using independent sample. So each sample must be randomly selected. Now, if these two conditions are met, the test is approximated by child square distribution with k minus one degrees of freedom where k is the number of samples. So again, if these two conditions are met, the Kruzko Wallis test is approximated by a child square distribution with k minus one degree of freedom where k is the number of samples. So the test statistics for the Krusko Wallis test is at least given three or more independent samples, the test statistics H for Krusko Wallis test is 12 over N times N plus one, parenthesis R1 square over N1 plus R2 square over N2 plus R3 square over N3 all the way to RK square over nk. So again, the k is the number of a sample, minus 3n plus 1. So again, k represents the number of samples. So again, if the sample is 3, then it will be r1 square over n1 plus r2 square over n2 plus r3 square over n3. That's if the sample size is 3. With the Kruska Wallis test, the sample size must be at least three or more. 
Then again, n will be the size of each sample. So ni is the size of i sample. Then uppercase n will be the sum of all the samples. So we use this concept in chi square distribution test, where we have k, the number of samples, uppercase n is the size of all the samples. Then ri is the sum of the ranks of the i sample. So R1 will be the sum of the ranks of sample one. So again, we will go through step by step how to perform the Krusko Wallis test. So this is also a hypothesis testing. It's an hypothesis testing. So the first thing we need to do is to state the claim. The claim means we need to identify our new and also alternative hypothesis. Then second step, we have to specify the level of significance which is our alpha, identify alpha. Then step three, we need to identify the degree of freedom, which is K minus one. Again, K is the number of samples. Then we need, if we have the degree of freedom and we have the alpha, we can determine again the critical value and the rejection region. Here we use the table, the chi square table. Use table six in happiness, be again, table six is the chi square table. Then we find the sum of the ranks for each sample. List the combined data in ascending order. This is what we did previously in recursion test also. Then we rank the combined data. Then we calculate the test statistics, which is the H equal to 12 over N, N plus one times parenthesis, R1 squared divided by N1 plus R2 squared divided by N2 all the way to RK squared divided by NK minus three times N plus one. Then from there we make our, so we have the critical value. We have our test statistics. Then we can make our decision either to accept or to reject HO that we can interpret the decision in the context of the original claim. So let's try one example here. So this is a Krusko Wallis test. The question says we want to compare the hourly pay rate of, of actuaries who work in California, Indiana. So here we have three, we're going to get three samples. We are going to compare the hourly pay rate of actuaries who work in California, Indiana, and Maryland. Now, to do so, you randomly select several actuaries in each state and record your hourly pay rates. So we have three samples of a starting hourly pay rate of actuaries in three different states. Now, the hourly pay rates are shown in the next slide. We have a half a 0 0.01, can you conclude that the distribution of actuaries hourly pay rate in these three states are different? So our HO and HA is about whether the pay rate for the three states of actuaries are the same or they are different. So this is the data set they gave us. We have California sample one, Indiana sample two, Maryland sample three. These are the hourly pay rate for actuaries. So let's start. The first step, we have to state our HO and HA. So our HO saying that there's no difference in the hourly pay rate in the three states. So HO will say there's a difference in the hourly pay rate in the eight, three states. Alpha is given to be 0 0.01. And since we know the number of samples, we have three states, three samples. So degree of freedom will be three minus one, which will give me two. So I know the degree of freedom, I know the alpha, I can find the value for the chi square. And the value is 9.210. Again, we did a chi square distribution. So that's why we are saying the concept of chi square distribution is almost same as Krusko Wallis test. The difference is the ranking we are going to. So now we know the our critical value, 9.210. Uh, 
again, if we have the alpha value, the level of significance, we know the sample size. Also, we know the number of samples. Uh, the number of samples is K. Here we have three samples from three different states. So if we go to the, our table, the row we go to two, degree of freedom two, the column we look at 0 0.01. The intersection of the two will give me 9.210. So the next step, we are going to rank our data. So the table show the combined data listed in ascending on the corresponding rounds. So as I'm saying earlier, the steps up to getting the critical value is the same step as doing child square distribution test. Now the difference comes here when we are doing the ranking. Here we want to find the test statistics. To find the test statistics first, we need to rank our uh, values in the data. So the table shows the combined data listed in ascending order and corresponding ranks. So the minimum is 33.45, Indiana 35.97, all the way to Maryland, the highest is 53.82. Then we start the ranking. Remember, we start from the lowest rank, so one. Why we have 2.5? Because we have 35.97 twice, so 2.5, 2.5. So next we move to four. The lowest is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. In 12.5, 12.5, we have 242.05. So 42.05 twice, so we have 12.5, 12.5. Then we move to the next will be only one value 43, 20, so 14. Then 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So all the values are one each. And so when we have the same value twice, we we'll put 0.5 between. So after we finish the ranking, we find the sum of the runs for each sample as follow. R1, we had all the ranking. So R1 in this case, most likely will be the Indiana. Let's see the first value. Uh, not Indiana. Okay, so the first value I can see is five, and California is five. So we get five plus 10, etc. So this is the first sample is California. So we had all the California ranks. Then our second value will be, I think this is Indiana. Now let's check us. Yes, Indiana, because Indiana we have one plus 2.5, and then one plus 2.5 plus 2.5. Then the last will be Maryland. So we sum the runs for each sample, and the sample represents each state. So California, uh, Indiana, and Maryland. So after we get the R1, R2, R3, remember the formula. Now we can be able to find the test statistics, which is H. So it to be 12 over N. Remember N will be the sum of all the samples. So we had everything, we get 29. Uh, what we mean, we mean is this. If you had all the data values here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So the total of all the sample, three samples values is 29. So that's why R is 29. I mean, N is 29. Uppercase N is the sum of all the samples. So 29. We already know the R1, so 160.5 square. The size is 10 divided by 10. R2 is 63.5 square. The size is 9. R3 is 211 or square divided by 10. And minus 3 times uppercase N, which is the sum of all the samples, 29 plus 1. Again, if you do all the calculations, you get 13.12. So when we know the test statistics, now we can make our decision now. So we can see 9.2 comes before 13.12. So because it's not in the brown region, the brown region, that means any value less than 
210 will be accepted HO. So now we are going to reject HO. So our decision said at 1% level of significance you can conclude that there is a difference in actuaries hourly pay rate ho said there is no difference so this will be the conclusion of using the crossco wireless test to determine whether three or more samples were selected from population having the same distribution as we said earlier this test again uses almost the same step as chi square. Actually, we use the chi square table also to find the test that it is. So, first we state our HO and HA. We identify the level of significance, which is the alpha. Then we find the degree of freedom, which is K minus 1. Then we use the chi square distribution test table uh, to find our critical value. When we get the critical value, we can see where we have our rejection area and no rejection area of the HO. So if the critical value is greater than the test that it takes, then we accept the HO. If it's lesser, then we reject. So next step, after we get a critical value, is to find the test that it takes. So this is where we are going to rank our three samples. When we rank all of them from the lowest to the highest, we are going to find the R1, R2, R3. R1 will be the sum of all the, the sum of the rank for the first sample. R2 will be the sum of the rank for the second sample. R3 will be the sum of the rank for the third sample. Then after we know that, we can find the H, which is again the test statistics. As we said earlier, if H is greater than and the critical value, then we reject HO. If H is less than the critical value, then we accept HO. So again, this is the conclusion for non-parametric tests for Kruska-Wallis tests. Thank you.